Hello and welcome. We are back with the Loom. You forgot the second hello. It's hello, hello. Not just hello. Actually, it's hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Exactly, because we are not two. There's an echo in the room. (laughs) We are not not alone today, Martin. We we have guests and we have two wonderful guests uh, from across the globe. That that sounds so cool. Across, Um, you can't say across the pond because there's no pond. No, because in the U.S. we used to. Yeah, okay. Well, there's the Mediterranean between us, yes. so um, there there is a lot of water in between and land. So it's it's really nice to have you. We have today um, the honor of having Chrono Passion Seven um, as guests, Andy and Palm, and uh, yeah, this podcast will be a very very interesting interesting one. We are getting to learn. Chrono Passion 7. We are getting to learn their background on why they are uh, podcasting and uh, what have they done before and how did they yeah, uh, come into watches and all of these little different things. Um, and also we have a few questions. But please just say hello to everybody if you want to just say hello. So hello, everybody. everybody. How who, are you? Yeah. Exactly. Hello, Ralph. Hello, Martin. We are yeah. Chrono Passion oh. 7. My name's Palm. My name's Andy, so that's what we do on our we channel. We are Chrono Passion right? 7. That yeah, is so fantastic. So program. <laughs> See, exactly. Well, now everybody knows who you are and what your name is. So that's perfect. Thank you. You have it really down. You have that little segment very well rehearsed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Done very many, much. Many super prepared. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I have a couple of questions. I just fire up a few questions. Then Martin before, is going. Before oh. you do that. The wristwatch check. Are you Fig, yes. Okay, we got to do a oh, risk no. question. Yeah. So um, let's start with the guests, as usual. So mm-hmm. uh, Andy Parm, who wants to go first? Go on, Andy, Parm. go on. You go first. Uh, oh, all right, you, I'll, go, I'll go first. Right, so <laughs> I was wearing my Omega Seamaster 300 Pro, but I, be, I was told we have to wear something more fitting to our hosts. So seeing that Martin has formerly lived in the United States, I have... A Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical on. 38 millimeter with the white dial. A lovely field watch, which makes me feel like I'm in the army because of the khaki strap, NATO strap, and just the very old school um, military vibes to the dial. Yeah. And is it working? No. <laughs> it's not the most durable. I, you, you thought, I'm not going to bring it up. Of course I'm bringing it up. <laughs> yeah, so course, tell, yeah. tell the listeners yeah, why not, it's not working. I, it's not working because I overwound it and I heard a, a ping and then I heard this zipping zzz, sort of noise and then I realized I'd, I'd messed the goddamn watch up. But I still have it in my room in honor of the United States of America. Yes. Well, although it's made in Switzerland. but It's made uh, in Switzerland now, yeah. We'll give it a pass. <laughs> we'll give it a, a partial yeah. United States. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Andy. So I'm rocking something quite special. So I'm wearing a, a Vertex. So the brand's been re- relaunched, right, recently, but this one's, gosh, probably from the 70s, maybe. Uh, it's a nice little gold watch, uh, 14 carat solid gold. And what's so special about this piece is that it was my granddad's and it's inscribed on the, the case back for 25 years of service. So a tradition, what I think is long lost these days, unfortunately. But yeah, it's not the most expensive watch by any means in my collection, but probably the most precious for what it represents. So that's what I'm wearing today. Yeah, I have to point out that nice. my university gave somebody a, an Apple Watch for 10 years of service. And I was thinking to myself, oh. that Apple Watch is going to be in a landfill <laughs> in, in 10 years. That's like, it's not ridiculous. Exactly. It's not very nice. You know. Yeah. And it was the base model aluminum one too, so... I mean that is I that's mean, what at least something that can outlast a bit. You know, that's more exactly than a my point. Is mm. yeah. yeah, but anyway, all right, Ralph, you want to talk? What, yeah, what are you yeah. Wearing? So uh, lovely watches. Um, I'm wearing. Um, yeah, I, I was switching uh, last last second basically. Um, just yesterday we had a in our watch little watch group a cheap watch appreciation day, so we have all won our. The cheapest watches that we have, and I, I wore an HMT from India. Um, HMT stands for Hindustan Machine Tools, also a company that make mechanical watches in license with citizen movements that they have licensed many, many decades ago, 50, 60 years ago. And when I went to India to to buy some HMT watches, uh, people looked at me and said, 
why would you want to buy an HMT? There is this wonderful new brand, Titan, which is quartz, and you want to buy mechanical watches. That's silly. They're looking old. And I said, yeah, that's exactly why I want them. And just really nice watches. And I found then one after a day, I found one store that still had some new, new old stock HMT watches. So anyhow, but I changed to um, one of my nicer watches. It's um, the Vacheron Constantin 56. Um, oh, nice. With a silver <laughs> dial, but with the, nice. with, the, with the original bracelet on it. Yeah. I, I really like sector dials, I realized. Which is a question for, a for, quote, for, yeah. for later of where does your collection go? And I didn't know, never knew that I like sector dials until I saw that watch. I thought, oh, <laughs> anyhow. So Martin, you. So um, I am wearing my Cartier Santos, the new one. And um, this is a, the, the medium size, 35 millimeter square silver dial. Um, and uh, I got it recently, I think what, about a year ago now, recently. I guess it's not that recent anymore. Uh, but it is, uh, I don't know, I just something about it. Uh, I was never really into Cartier for, for the, ma the, the men's side, I guess. Uh, my wife was always into Cartier. She had a lot of Cartier jewelry. She has a lot of Cartier. Um, uh, she had a tank. She had, uh, now she has a, recently got a, um, uh, which one? The, I'm blanking the, the smaller, Quartz Pantair. one, Pentair. Oh. Yes, sorry. Yeah. She got a Pentair yeah. Mini, uh, which apparently they're a pair. Uh, they're they're very hard to come by. Uh, they're they're eighteen millimeters in uh, diameter, which is an extremely tiny watch if you think about it. And uh, it's so small that they couldn't fit the ra the little railroad track markers on it, which is kind of cool because Cartier is known to have that little railroad track around it, and this one doesn't have anything. It just has a white dial. Cartier uh, insignia and then just the blue hour and minute hand. So it's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so because of her, I really got into Cartier, um, both the jewelry side, obviously not for me. I, I don't wear any jewelry, but for uh, you know women, I really got into the history of it and I tried to read the Cartier book. Uh, it was too thick. Mm, haven't, was, I seen, uh, little have, bit... haven't, uh, haven't I seen you wearing these bracelet thingies? Oh yeah, I did. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, my wife took that. Yeah, my wife took it. Uh -huh. um, so now she's wearing two of them. <laughs> um, technically, one is for my daughter and one is for my wife. And then my wife wears it when my daughter doesn't wear want to wear it, which is conveniently all the time. Um, so she wears two. But anyway, point of story is, uh, yeah. So I got a Cartier watch finally. I feel like there's so much history behind it that I couldn't not have one, and hence the Santos. Mm -hmm. Price for the longest answer for the wrist check goes to Martin this day. <laughs> 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 Talked about the daughter, the watch. wife's jewelry, and uh, yeah, oh, finally what <laughs> he's wearing. So <laughs> amazing. <laughs> ah, lovely. All right. Let's start with a couple of rapid fire questions for our guests. Mm, so obviously, um, we, we heard that some big watch companies or retailers, so no, no, pre-owned dealers, have been getting um, investments from venture capital companies and also from some public figures. So we have assumed, based on your name, CP7, that you must also have received a few millions from CR7. Is that correct? <laughs> it's an interesting um question because we did kind of think the cp7 kind of <laughs> could be mistaken for the cr7 kind of a bit more catchy yeah so that's a good spot but unfortunately as great a spot as that is we did we got no money ah oh, we, because we heard that the chrono 24 <laughs> got an investment from cristiano ronaldo so we thought ah, yes that must well, be know, the reason for your name we're still waiting for the the call <laughs> yeah. but They'll the abbreviation us, yeah. is oh. on purpose right we yeah. did the abbreviation on purpose for for brandon and uh -huh, we thought yeah. well cr7 c yeah, cp7 it's all and it could be 007 you know it's, it's yeah it's, we can play with it on you know many as a levels brand. when we did that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I have even forgotten all of the other you know names that we had in mind for our our podcast oh god we, we opened were, a book oh, oh we, could, <laughs> we were literally we we, we, we no we, we literally got our because we, we both have a big watch book collection right so we were going through these books and just looking for random words that were not hugely used in uh in i guess the watch world right things that people forgot about that could be a catchy name so 
didn't work out very well, right? But and Ralph wanted to be neutral in terms of branding, so which I think yeah. is a wise wise choice. Yeah. So we wanted to be Chrono Passion at first, two words, but then there's a famous boutique in Paris oh. called Chrono Passion, one word, uh, run by Laurent Picciotto, and we kind of thought, well, we don't want to tread on his toes. So it was two words always, anyway. And then we thought the seven for luck. Add us, add, we need a bit of luck because there's so much. There's so many watch um, podcasts, YouTube channels, influencers, advisors, people who love talking about watches. So we thought we'll stick the seven on just to just for a bit of luck and hope that that luck. gives us. Yeah. Well, we ended up here, so look how lucky we are. Ah, yeah, so, yeah, it's so worked actually. There you yeah. go. Going to work already. <laughs> yeah, we, we really, really love your podcast because it's it's lovely to see that passion for urology and to actually learn things. Right? I mean, you have a lot of exposure already to really the big ones in the in the watch industry. You have talked to them before. You you know people, and it's it's really lovely to hear that and to also learn more in in depth knowledge. Uh, yeah, I think there. I mentioned this to Andy. Like the first message I sent to Andy, or was it? I don't know which one of you I sent. I think it, it was to. Andy. Yeah. yeah, it was Andy. I was saying like, how in the hell did you get uh, um, the CEO of uh, what was it? Benjamin, Arabov. Yeah. Benjamin, Benjamin Arabov. Arab, yeah, Benjamin Arab. Yeah, Benjamin Arab. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, how? How? You, you, this is your second episode <laughs> of the podcast, and you well, get like a big hitter like that. Third. It was our third, so we had third. a week extra. Mm. All right. Yeah. By yeah. the way, I, I do have to point out we asked for an interview with him for mm -hmm. Dubai Watch Week. We wanted to, you know, equal with you, but we, oh, I see. He turned us down. He rejected oh. our no. interview request. Oh. Yes. Well, so, I'll yeah. be there. I'll, I'll have a word with him. Yeah. We'll have it's, a word with yeah, him. Hey, it's hey. one nil yeah, for you. It's one nil for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, between the two of you, you, you're both British, right? Right. Okay. Certainly am. Yep. So, um, why we start with Andy for the first part of the answer, and then Palm takes over, and then Andy again. So, list all the British watch okay. brands that you know. Andy. Oh, gosh. Well, Roger Smith, Daniels, Palm, uh, Gremon. One, one, ah, one at a time. Oh, no, sorry. No, sorry. Oh, it's forward, okay. It's okay. Now you have already oh. three, so that's good. Which, Palm. You said three. Okay. okay. Uh, Christopher Ward. Do I need three? If no, you can. you can go back to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> did back did to we Andy. record Fears? <laughs> we got Fears there. Uh... Fears, no, all right. Yeah, fears, okay. good, yeah. Duckworth. Warm back to you. Which one? Duckworth. That's a watch Duckworth, brand. Yeah, yeah. Two. yeah. Okay. Elliot Brown, which are mm. quite a new upcoming brand, doing some great stuff. Is it, are yeah, these no, think, no. they're not the ones with the with the fire engine things, right? I oh, know that's William no, Wood. Uh, that's ah, William Wood, which William, is my yeah. which is my one. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Thanks for my news. <laughs> I was stumped there. <laughs> yeah, we are nice. Let's see. We give tips. Yeah. Then there's, I think, some military watches, some field watches, and stuff that. That CWC also. Mm. Yeah, CWC, big big yeah. uh, military. Then some that went brand. to the Mount Everest, I think. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh God. So, oh, uh, Smiths. Yeah, it's there, Smith. you there, there you go. go. <laughs> yeah, which is actually a rebrand, a remade by Time Factors, which is another brand. Oh, see, I yeah, really love Time Fierce, Factors. by the way. I think Fierce does a, a yeah. magnificent job. And um, what's this? Um, okay, it, yeah, no, of, of course, it's also British. Anodin, right? I think we didn't mention that. Yeah, they're Scottish, aren't they? Yeah, Scottish, British, yeah. 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 Scottish, it's a yeah. different country. I know it sounds weird. Mm. For, for, no, but still for, a British, yeah, British, still a but, British uh, watchmakers, yeah, exactly. yeah. crew. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I missed another one. I, isotope. Is it Isotope? As yeah, well, isotope, yeah. Isotope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're very hot right now as well. Are we yeah. still playing this game? Or the <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep going <laughs> so forever. We can yeah. stop. And well, thank you for listening we, to the we, Loom Plot. We, we sort of gave you some <laughs> tips there. Okay, so how many of these brands do you own? Uh, Andy, you first. <laughs> <laughs> I own a Smiths. Huh? There we go. You own one. I've got the Smiths Commando 36 millimeter. Nice. There you go. The, the Explorer style, right? Yeah, yeah. So they had the yeah. Everest, which was the Explorer style, but then there's a Commando, which was a variation of the Explorer. I think the Precision range. They did a Commando for U.S. military only. That was only available on base, and it's a, a reissue of that. So I own one of those. So. Cool. Lovely, lovely. So, Andy, you're yes. not yet having any of the British watches. Well, Vertex is British, isn't it? 
Was that Swiss? Text, uh, I think the, the Swiss made, but there could be a British brand, actually. Um, well, technically, so then, yeah, this Christopher is... Ward also is, is Swiss made, but it's a yes, British brand. I need to I'm, check. Yeah. I don't know for sure, but let's go with that just so I don't lose. Um, well, Rolex. However, if I, yeah. <laughs> Rolex, they started off in Britain, yeah. started in London. Right? London. Yeah. Uh, once again, Vertex was founded in London. Founded there, there but, but founded there by go, but British which nationality? Watch. I have to say that as a German here. So. No, but by a British guy. <laughs> oh, a British guy. Yeah. yeah oh, no, it was a I mean, his name was Claude Lyon, uh, which oh. he sounds very French to me. Claude mm. Lyon is not a very British name, but he was born in London in 1885. There we go. There, there you go. go. Okay. So, Pam. I would say that's British. Pam. Yes, sir. Rolex, love or hate? Love, 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 love. Andy? Absolutely love as well. Ah, I, I'm never okay, going to say anything okay. but about Rolex. Was this always like that? For me, for... I always... Go on. Go on, Andy. No, I, I, it's, for me, I think it was a brand I had to grow into a little bit. I've had three Rolexes and to date. I've owned three Rolexes. Currently, I own zero. However, the ones that I don't own anymore are regrets. So mm. I think that says everything. I think it's a maturity thing for myself. And I think Pam will touch on this, but I do think there's a certain age you hit where Rolex makes more sense. And I think I was just a few years too early. And I do really, I had a beautiful Oyster Quartz day date, uh, solid gold, incredible. I really, I'm, I'm really angry at myself. I'm not going to swear, but for not, uh, you know, having that piece anymore, but that's how we learn, right, in, in this journey. But so, Pam's yeah. certainly a, a different kind of guy in this. That was an oyster, yeah, well, oyster quartz day date? Yep. Mm. And it's yeah, incredible. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They had the gold I think those style are absolute, and, yeah. absolute bangers for the bargain, you know, for the yeah. price that you can pick them up for right now. Because mm. generally yeah, speaking, I mean, just, let's talk about this for a second here. Um, you can get an oyster quartz day date solid gold around ten thousand dollars euros pounds whatever you want to talk, you know call it um which for the same price if you want a regular day date you're getting one without the bracelet it's going to be on a strap and with the oyster course you're getting the strap because it's integrated bracelet right so yeah yeah and yeah and just to touch on the quartz side that movement is probably one of rolex's best finished movements like people think quartz and Especially maybe modern collectors or younger collectors will think a oh, Rolex quartz, no, stay, you know, plastic quartz movement inside in the Rolex. What? But it's not, it's got a heart, it's got a real engine inside it. And yeah. it's showing you, it's over engineering. If you ever see the yeah. movement, that's Rolex just over engineering the quartz movement. But they were Something trying different. to, this was their future. This was what they were banking on. Rolex made the, you know, we can call it a mistake, but Rolex banked on the fact that quartz was going to become the new thing and they wanted to be the rugs, luxury quartz manufacturer. Yeah. So that no, they were doing lovely, the same thing movements. that they did before. I think they have even yeah. what, 21, 25 jewels or something in there in the quartz movement. That's pretty unheard of usually. Uh, it's, it's a lovely, lovely watch. I, I, I'm, Isn't it thermal compensated yeah. as well? Uh, I think I don't. Yeah, so, I think it, I, I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure. It might be. Um, uh, what's his name? Mr. Rolex um, is also... Hans Wilsdorf? No, no. Oh, no, 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 the current the, guy. The okay. current Mr. Rolex who writes the books. Uh, he's on, on uh, Dubai Watch Week as well. You might, might bump into him if you want. Oh, excellent. He okay. is a big uh, fan of the Oyster Quartz. And he says, if you if you collect anything, go for the Oyster Quartz. And if you can find one, there's there's a couple of watches actually, I think probably, he, he's not 100% sure because not public knowledge, but I think he's he says maybe 100 maybe 50 that actually are perpetual calendar quartz watches that were oh, never wow. officially yeah. sold but they have found their way in some ad's for whatever reason and they're out there so if you find one of these uh, quartz watches that actually have um a perpetual calendar in it it's it's just mind-blowing uh, mm. and and you don't wouldn't know from from the outside so it's uh yeah because you could get a constellation as well the omega constellation quartz perpetual calendar and yeah. it's really cool the way it works as well so that that okay, but the rolex one i've not heard of before so that's that's yeah, quite something so, um, so, so going back to the brand so yeah so rolex so foolishly now in hindsight i was always thinking right you know when i was in my 20s and probably early 30s i thought rolex is a, a brand you get when you're older so i always thought 40s which is completely foolish because they were much more available back then when I was that age, <laughs> and the price point was a lot lower. And 
having waited so long, that's completely changed. But I have, I, I love the brand. I've a bar the Yachtmaster 2, the Day Date, and the Sky Dweller. At some point, I've owned every single model or, and moved it on and currently own a few. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, for me, it's, uh, I mean, because people on the podcast can't see the book in the background is a picture of the Batman on my wall. So it's, um, yes, I'm quite the fan. Yeah. Uh, for, for me personally, I, w- I was really one of these people who thought, ah, Rolex, that's for pimps. That's for, for show-offs. It's it's not really my thing. Um, yeah. Even though when I started watch collecting, I was, was a bit of this, from an orological perspective, these watches are not that great, right? Um, I always thought, oh, you can get so much more value for money in orological terms from other brands until I put one on my wrist. And that completely changed my my view on Rolex. I put it on my wrist and said, "From from from this is not for me." To, "Whoa, this is me," right? And suddenly it felt yeah. you you feel the quality of everything. You feel how well it fits and how nice it looks on your wrist. And suddenly you're just sold, and that's it. Within an instant, it was like, "Okay, I need a Rolex in my life." So, <laughs> excellent, yeah. and you got it. Was it how readily available was it at that stage? Oh, don't, don't, don't remind me of that. <laughs> that horrible story. I went to, um, on a business trip to Johannesburg in South Africa. So, um, went to Peter Mashlup. It's one of these bigger, um, pre-owned dealers there. Lovely guy. So we got talking. I bought a Oyster Perpetual 39 blue dial for about two and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. Was that like, the one with the green pips on the yes. hour mark? Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I thought, great, I have my first Rolex. This is fantastic. And I loved it. And then I sold it for about £3,000 uh, half a year later. And then um, bought a Datejust 2 because I wanted to upgrade to a slightly bigger one. But these prices were ridiculous. It was just December 2019 when I sold that watch. And it's, um, yeah, well, half a year later, they would have. It would have cost double, right? So it's uh, yeah. It was really a bad timing on my side, but it was it was uh, yeah. At the time, I thought yeah, it's fine. Mm. I also bought the Deutsches too uh, for a cheaper price. It's it's when when people say, well, you sell low, but you also buy low, right? It's um, yes, you know what to do. You still yeah. When you buy at retail, you do. There is you never shouldn't really lose much. Yeah. That's the thing. But in this case, it was it was about. One thousand pounds below retail when I bought it, or one thousand two hundred pounds below okay. retail when I bought it, because that's an oyster perpetual. It was readily available in all stores. It wasn't wasn't yeah. by any stretch of the imagination limited or anything like that. The OP hmm. is was yeah always available, and it, it went like this here in Dubai. I don't know if you listened to one of the podcasts or if it's uh, if, if if I mention it there. It was basically you go into a shop into shopping mall, you go into the Rolex uh, AD. And you just throw because it's usually full of people, and you throw at the yeah. at the sales reps from from the second row, saying like, "Oh, it's a perpetual, <laughs> not thirty nine And he'll say like, "Yeah, we have black, white, and blue, um, twenty one thousand dirhams, nineteen thousand with ten percent discount." Want one? And it was like a fish market, right? Wow! <laughs> and you already yeah, got it the, was, you know. So it was a very quick so transaction. So I have to point stuff. this out as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. when I bought my first Rolex, I went into an AD. Um, and they had three subs and one GMT, all the black dials at the time. I'm just sitting there in the case, right? And then they gave us 12% discount. Um, yeah. And I was upset because 12%, they just did 15% like a month prior. So <laughs> I was like, come on, give me the 15. Like you just did 15. Like, oh, now it's 12. And I was wow. very upset by this. But yeah, How times this change. Very, yeah. <laughs> but we were getting 15% until uh, my... Last acquisition uh, new from the AD for Rolex was my Datejust 36, which was um, June, July, sometime around there of 2019. And we, I still got 15% on that. Oh, Stainless well. steel. Okay. Not bad. Okay. Not bad. So, yeah, anyway, yeah. So, yeah. So some watches came and gone. I, I went for the Explorer 1, the two-tone. I got it for retail. Okay. And yeah. I thought, wow, that's amazing. But it is just too small for my wrist. So I decided, hmm has to go eventually so yeah now so this leads you to the question of if it was too small for you what are these guys 
ideal watch diameter. Yeah, wait, that's uh, yeah, that's the next. It's, you jumped three questions, but it's okay. What's yeah, but it's, it's ideal? A, it's what's going your, on right it's now? Nothing like a schedule. I tell yeah. you, yes. Yeah. What's yeah. your yeah. ideal <laughs> millimeters? <laughs> Let's do metric, okay? Oh. <laughs> um, who measures diameters in inches? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Seven eighths of a sure quarter. Zero point seven yeah. inches. <laughs> Sorry. Can we do it by category? Because for me, I think for a dress watch, because it's supposed to be understated, slim, elegant. I said this on the previous podcast. Well, the last podcast me and Palm did actually. Um, 36 millimeter is a sweet spot for me mm-hmm. on a dress piece. However, if I went over to a sporty diver, 40 millimeter is a sweet spot. So it really depends on the style of watch. Uh, but I have zero rules. I'll wear a 32 millimeter or I'll rock a 50 millimeter azimuth robot watch. So what's the perfect? There's no such thing. It's just what looks good. And every watch wears different. And even though it's got big diameters, it might fit well on your wrist. So yeah, we we have the same make the rules. And for me, I, I throw everything out of the window with watch sizes. I just put it on. If I think it looks cool, I'll rock it. <laughs> if it doesn't, then I'll still rock it. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. And you, Paul? Yeah. So, for, well, I'm I'm not like Andy. I have a, a specific a thing I like. So, uh, again, I, I agree with what he's saying because for me, thirty nine, the uh, Black Bay fifty eight thirty nine mil was probably the sweet spot for wrist. You know, the way it sat on my wrist and just the the size and comfort and everything. So, forty mil, the GMT Master Two, I think, is perfection, mm-hmm. and that's at forty mil. Um, but then I'm also have one of the watches I have today is this Seamaster Pro 300. Um, and it's 42 again, it just mm-hmm. depends how it, it's laid out and how it's lug to lug and just the dimensions and the, the fit. I, it, I, it is specific from watch to watch. If a, I could get a watch that's for like a, and we we're talking in our uh, last show on Chrono Passion 7 podcast, um, that, um, the AP Offshore, they do a 42 millimeter, and it's a watch I like, but it's just gigantic as well. Yeah. It, but it this, this Seamaster yeah. is 42 mil, and it sits so nicely, and, it, and you can wear it with pretty much anything. So the size thing is sometimes a bit misleading. It also depends on your wrist. I mean, I have a friend who has a very round wrist, same exact same diameter as mine. <laughs> And I have a more flat wrist. So for me, some some watches really still work. For him, no, not so much. It sticks out. I have never heard, like Ralph has mentioned this flat wrist thing like a thousand times. (laughs) And before him, (laughs) before I met him, I'd never even heard that there's like diameter, like there's different profiles of wrist and this makes a difference. Yeah, like I'd never even heard of this before. But Because because (laughs) you you wondered why why does this watch, when we have exactly the same steel bracelet and it it fits Mm. perfectly and you think, so why does it look odd on him and not odd on me there must there must be the wrist right it, it's not yeah. the watch because it's so it's just the shape of your wrist and also with my little wrist bone and all of the stuff whatever next question um so you i think andy already answered the question with a 50 millimeter azimuth, azimuth <laughs> robot watch i my question was what is your most like obscure watch brand or watch that you have so i guess what we've owned Sorry? Oh, obscure brand. Interesting. Um, what we've owned, because I've, I've a minute, I don't really have anything that obscure in my collection, but yeah, you're right with the Azimuth. That's probably the wackest, wack, one of the wackiest watches I've owned. That and the King Midas, the Rolex King Midas was quite a crazy one. Oh, that one. one's awesome. You, 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 yeah. Do you have the Midas still? Because I know that you had it in the, oh, the, the, the Andy Instagram. Andy doesn't hang on to them for very long, unfortunately. <laughs> You're going to learn something about me. I I kind of trade watches a lot. Yeah. Just because I love watches, I want to taste different ones, and I can't keep spending my, you know. Blink and it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, great, Foster, you know, if, <laughs> it's a great way to experience a lot of different watches. I mean, you have to sometimes just trade them in or, or just consolidate or unconsolidate, whatever it is, yeah. And you can't. Definitely, but what is I, I'll tell you one last. Ah, sorry, yeah, Andy, sorry. The one, la- well, really, one last one quickly. The fastest turnover watch I've ever had was a mad one. <laughs> so sorry, uh, this is funny. <laughs> Max Busser, but uh, I had it for was it less than a week? What? Less than a week. Yeah. Okay. Less than a week. Less than a week. And... That's ages. Come on. <laughs> for, for Martin, I, I for Martin. That was in 12 Andy. hours. Yeah. <laughs> Martin can... one pusher came up uh, and I had to get it. Yeah. Yeah, Martin can sell a watch, uh, buy a watch twice in one week. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, <laughs> I've had stuff because the Bison thing is generally, but by the time I go to bed that night that I bought it, I know if it's a mistake or not. So that's my issue is, and I will wake up and I'm like, yeah, I screwed up. Mm. So then I will well, have to go and get rid of it and kind of, yeah, it, it's. Sucks, give us, but, give us uh, an example of that. What, 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 uh, what generally happened? all my tutors. All the tutors that I've owned, um, I always have this passion for tutor um, mm -hmm. for some reason, and they're just not perfect for some reason. For me, that is, right? I love the Black Bay 54. I hate guilt. So I bought that twice, sold it twice, both within the course of less than a week. Um, the Pelagos <laughs> FXD, also, same situation, like within a couple of days each. Gone, too big. Wow. I feel so, better now. Yeah. So. Mm, yeah, yeah, you're in good hands. Yeah, that's actually you. Make Andy look like a, a hoarder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But no, but uh, I don't keep a lot of things, so my collection is fairly small. Um, I would love to add things to it. However, I just can't find the things that truly gel with me entirely. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. And the lack of money—that's also a problem. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't have infinite funds. So the biggest bane of a watch collector is not having so, enough um, to buy money. all the watches we want. We have to. We have to <laughs> yeah. combine the next question to you. So, what is your most obscure like or the, the most liked obscure watch brand? And the next question. So we, we move on a bit. Um, what was your first luxury watch that you considered okay. luxury? Which is very personal. All right, obscure watch brand. I'm trying to think. That's a good question because I don't really buy obscure. I come kind of. I wouldn't say generic, but everything in my collection is quite well known. You know, it's not. It's not something that you wouldn't know. Obscure by obscure, you mean not many people know about it, or is just completely yeah, just left, left field? Yeah, left field, just out of different. I don't know. I don't know. That's just, that's, you've stumped, you've got me there. Okay. One, one all. Well, one all to the... <laughs> next one then. What was your first luxury watch that you considered luxury at the time? Okay. So my first luxury watch was a Speedmaster, Omega Speedmaster Day Date, which is also known as the Triple Date. Right. And mm -hmm. yeah, and that was, uh, it had everything. And I'm, I'm, I'm one, Andy will probably let you know, is I'm one for value. So it had everything on it. It had the day, the date, the month, it had everything, a complete calendar, yeah. full calendar, whichever, whichever one they call it, and a chronograph as well. So, and I wore that for, I bought that in 2008 and only moved it on at the beginning of this year. So that lasted mm -hmm. a long time. And yeah, it's a very I nice wore that to my wedding. It's yeah, nice it's, it's a, and it's 40 mil. Again, talking about size, that, Yeah. was perfectly dimensioned it was just it was slightly domed but just big enough lug to lug it was just very nice to wear but i had it, it had done its time but that was my first what i would consider grown-up kind of watch very nice and and you andy so my mine's quite a funny story so mine was a jiggle kucha a jlc memo box which you know it, okay oh, that's la, okay la. uh But I bought it from Chrono, you know, Chrono 24. And before I knew anything about watches, what to look for. So so I order it. Long story short, it arrives and it's like 31 millimeters or something like this. So very, very small. And I was like, oh, you know what? I still like it. It's cool. I'm going to rock it. And then my father-in-law saw this watch and he's like, it's very beautiful, but this is a woman's watch, right? Why are you wearing that? And I'm like, okay, this has to go. So that was my first luxury watch. It was a bit of a mistake. However, arguably now going to the person who I am today would probably rock it still. So it, you, at, back then I was still maturing, but yeah, my first luxury watch, but also maybe my first luxury watch mistake as well. Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a, but it's a lovely watch, of course. I mean, 31 is tough. I mean, if it's very, very small, it's, it's, it's tough, especially at that time, I guess. A couple of years ago, when uh, every watch was big and the bigger the better, right? It was when Panerai was happy yeah. and everybody was going at 45, 46. The whole Hublots were all big and everything was just huge. Well, yeah, tough one. So, um, I'm sorry, yeah. Ralph, I've just thought of my obscure watch. I've just I had to think hard about it. Is there, you know, the Mr. Jones watches, have you seen those? Yeah. The ones yeah, from yeah. London. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is a really cool brand. I was thinking of getting one. There's one called day and night where it rotates it almost looks like a complication even though it's a very basic disc moving around but it just moves around to show different parts of the day nice. the little characters on there and that that for me i'd say is is the the correct answer to your question 
Mr. Jones. I remember that. Is that. Obscure. I think they have, yeah, that's, they have one as um, Memento Mori, right? I think as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Remember you will die. And I thought when I saw this first, I thought, why would you put this on the watch? <laughs> but then you think about it a bit more, the philosophical aspect, you think, ah, yeah, you just should enjoy life, right? That's why you should remember that it's not eternal. Yeah, right? Forget about the time. Yeah. Just live in the <laughs> yeah, okay. Don't, don't bother about five seconds being late or something. Yeah. So, mm. Pam, you are London based, right? That's right. Have you been robbed yet? <laughs> It's so a funny story because we hear so much about watch crime. So that you don't, so that you don't jinx me. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I was a kid, we, I must have been about twelve years old, and I had a calculator watch, a digital calculator watch. And I remember my mm -hmm. dad. It wasn't the yeah. Casio one that I wanted. My dad got me some obscure Taiwanese brand one from someone he knew at work. And um, we we're on the bus, and this big kid gets on, looking around, and. He goes up to, there's the four of us, and we're sitting on the top deck of the bus. We're trying to look really cool. And then um, he says, oh, he asked one of them for the time. And he gave him the time. And he goes, oh, that's a nice watch. Give it to me. And then I heard, basically, he just robbed two of the people sitting in front of me. I thought I'd be clever and took my um, watch off and put it in my bag. And he saw me, obviously. <laughs> my friends still joke about this. And he goes, have you got, I go, no, I haven't got one. He goes, yes, you have. You've got a digital watch. I just saw you put it in your bag. So <laughs> this guy must have been about 18, which he looked, which was gigantic for me at the age of 12. Mm. And I handed over my watch. There's nothing you could really do. You don't know what could happen. But um, that's the only time, luckily, touch wood. And I'm hoping nothing else happens. So I don't want to go in too much about the London <laughs> crime Cross, scene. Crossing fingers. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I recently talked to, um, to a friend of mine um, who is a... Um, who owns a few restaurants in, in London, and uh, he was wearing his Rolex, and he's taking the bus every now and then to work, right? So, and, and I asked him, so you wear your watch in London? You heard a lot about the watch crime there, and he's like, well, no. I have never heard of that. And I thought, this is great. If you don't actually are in the watch universe, right? if you're not a watch nerd, yeah. you just live your life. Thousands of people probably wear their normal watches and don't think that this is something special. Uh, that they should have. I mean, obviously, news are news because they are extraordinary. If it's an uh, everyday occurrence, then people wouldn't wouldn't talk about it in the news, right? So, yeah. Ah, yeah this so, is, I, I heard this I, as well. I, I don't wear anything expensive. I should, right? But, like, it's in your mind. Us, we're all scared, especially in London, that your arm will be chopped off. And there are stories where people mm. get robbed. I've never heard of an arm getting chopped off, to be honest with you. But, um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, it has impacted me, so I'm kind of like, oh, I'm going here. I, I won't wear this, but I have yeah. before. I knew this. I used to wear Explorer too. I used to wear it with a T in Knightsbridge. It's probably one of the dodgiest places because yeah, yeah. there's an affluent area, and I've just used to wear it with a t-shirt and walk around. Didn't care. Nothing happened to me. But then, mm. as soon as I started hearing about these, someone getting stabbed and stuff, and I thought, right, okay, I'm putting them away. I yeah. wear them to yeah. specific places. You know, if I'm going out for an evening, and and then you hear. These more scare stories that the waiters are in a network and just spotters. messaging their friends yeah. else. Yes, spotters. You kind of like God. I don't know. I don't even know what to do anymore. Now I'm at the point where I, I just I don't care anymore. You're not thinking it's sensible, attitude. but not yeah. Be sensible, but not and not stupid. But mm. don't deny yourself yeah. the pleasure of the watches that we have. I've, I think if you but like I heard a, a guy. I heard a guy said no. he just said just wear long sleeve shirts. Yeah, that's and true. I'm going to do that. Yeah. We know. Yeah. So uh, he, he said he was wearing like a Richard Mille long sleeve. He was wearing a hoodie or something. And he looked, you know, homeless as his most <laughs> style is these days. And nobody bothered, right? Because they assumed I'm that he had no money, hoodie, but he was, yeah. Maybe not really. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. just wearing a Richard Mille. <laughs> right. Wow. I have a good recommendation. You know, I grew, I mean, I grew up through the 80s, so I was born in the 70s. So that means yeah. I have gone Me through the aerobic stuff and all of these leg warmers and the frotty wrist wristbands. You know, the sweatbands that you had, the tennis yes, players. Yes, I remember yeah. those, yeah. Just put that Beyond on Borg top ones. Of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mac and roll. I'm so the same just, generation as you, I ah, think. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we have the quiff. That's why we have the, if you, so I'll take the screenshot actually. So, that's why we got the yeah, I'll take the screenshot. So share this with your with your um so Andy and yes, Martin yes. Look like do. brothers and me and Ralph. Sorry, right, well I'm gonna do the screenshot <laughs> now. All right, everybody say cheese. Cheese. Huh? <laughs> got it. All right, that's gonna be the Instagram yeah. post for this uh, episode. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Um, so next question then. Um, 
let's let's do the last one because it might be a bit too long to answer. So let's let's go for it. Uh, what's your watch collecting strategy? Do you have one? Ooh. Who's that? Too? Both of you. I mean, go on, Bam, you uh, go first. Okay. Cool, yeah. cool. My my watch collecting strategy ended this week. I would say. Well, I say that. I said that last time. So, I bought a watch. I bought a Daytona last year, early last year. And I thought that was it. I don't want to, I don't want any more. And what, what in that, in that trade, I, it was gray market. I couldn't, don't have a 10 year waiting list. I'm sorry. I don't, you know, it's never mm-hmm. going to happen for me if I don't go that way. I traded in uh, my yacht master and my no date submariner towards that watch. And I was quite happy. That's it. I'm done. Forget it. I've hit the, the pinnacle of what I wanted. And then that submariner was like, it's not there anymore. I need a submariner. I have mm. to have a submariner. Until recently, uh, I bought um, a, a bluesy, and it's just uh, now. It's now it's complete for now. Watch this space. Um, maybe in a year's <laughs> time, I'll be telling you about something, a day date, or oyster quartz, or whatever else we're going to talk about. But for now, that's me done. But I just think have a nice core collection, and then have some. Nice watches and then maybe a fun watch that you can just move around. I'm not one who likes trading. I know when I, before I got into this craziness, I was just buy and keep and that was it. And now I just see, and I still am nothing like other people where get by it. It lasts, well, Andy basically, and it moves and you you end up with just, actually it's, it's the dream to have a small, a nice small core collection. And I'm keeping mine too eight pieces i've got seven now so there's one space missing in the box but i'll wait and see what that is so my that's my strategy are you talking about having a a, a nice collection or rolex waiting game type stuff which which point were you coming from Hmm. interesting interesting yeah and how about you andy so i'm learning more from from palm so i think it's i think it's good to be honest to um when you're around other people, it helps shape you as a collector in a good way. So before meeting Palm, I was very spontaneous. And I'll be honest, I wasn't really a, a watch collector. Mm-hmm. I, I was new to you know to the scene. So I just thought I need one good watch. So I was trading up, trading up until I got to a, a Patek Philippe, a 5119R. I thought, that's it. I'm done. I, what else do I need? I've got a, a Patek Philippe. It's a, I give believe the best brand or one of the most respected. Why do I need anything else? And then you go in a rabbit hole and it swallows you whole. And then you realize I need a collection and I needed to liquidate that in order to start building a collection. But I'd say it's only recently I've discovered what kind of collector I am. And I've tried with modern watches. I really have. And I do, I do love modern watches, but my heart belongs with, with vintage in all honesty. That's who I am. So I feel like now my, you know, if we're talking core collection, like I, I have some nice anchor pieces, let's say. So like the Zenith, I have a really cool Corum gold ingot um, watch as well, which is like a 15 gram gold bar as a watch face. Is this um, the one with the bubble, you'd think bubble, that's kind of, bubble crystal? No bubble, no bubble, ah, no, no. Okay. It's Corum in the gold and no pun intended, but golden era when they, you know, were just getting into their stride and their watches were, beautifully crafted before it all got a little weird like the bubbles were inspired by the rolex bubble right and um, that's a whole other story so corum not the most you know loved brand but they have some vintage gems for sure mm. um but right now my itch and it links to palm is a submariner i want a, uh, a no date and the 5513 would it be a dream or a birth year uh so that's where i am i'm just kind of okay i've, I've got my core vintage which i like Mm. But now I'd like, you know, a bit more substance. So get a Rolex again in the collection, maybe some Vacheron dress watches, some Cartier again. I love Cartier. Mm. So I, I know what collector I am, but as in strategy, I think now it's just trying to mature my collection and stop moving watches so quickly. Now I've got a better idea of what I love and like and just try and build a steady collection, you know, and not go too crazy, which right. is, let's yeah. be honest, that's the disease we have, right? Oh. But that's where I am. So I hope that kind of answers the question. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's it's very good. I think it's um it's a mix, right? It's a bit of an opportunity. I mean, for me, I I'm completely open. I'm an opportunistic mess watch collector. 
when people look at my watch collection, yes. I heard very often, wow, what a diverse collection. Really, somebody who values horological things. You have a you know, flyback chronograph from Breguet. You have a, you know, a nice dress watch from this, and you have this, and you have that. And uh, like this would, that's what uh, a goal of mine to create this watch collection. But it just happened. It's not. It's just opportunistic. It's just a good deal. I've had a good auction. I found something for a good price. I like the watch. I bought it. Um, it's not as planned. I mean, I would love to take the credit for it, but I just can't because it's, <laughs> it's, it's sometimes it's just like a friend of mine saying, "Hey, I have this uh, Skydweller two tone. Just came in. Um, Rolex called me. Do you want it for a list price?" Duh. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. so why um, not? <laughs> so that's what, what did I ever want a sky dweller? No, it's just also quite expensive. So I was like, oh, well, but then I had to, you know, just uh, shuffle a bit around and make space for it in the collection and then go for it. Sometimes it's just, uh, yeah, opportunities open, right? Sometimes. How about you, Martin? You're a bit more. Oh. You a bit more straight there. No, uh, Parm Parm was asking a question oh, uh, earlier. I don't think you heard him. You you uh, didn't hear what he was asking. But Parm, uh, the next question is getting to that. Oh, so see. I'll okay. ask. Yeah. So I'll, I'll <laughs> ask the next question since we're already here yeah. at this point. But uh, essentially, um, what is you were you were asking about uh, whether we're interested in what your kind of Rolex game is, what mm. the next watch is, and that's exactly what Ralph was going to. Uh, that's what's on the list. Oh, uh, next cool. is what is what is what what has caught your eye what is your next watch what are you looking yeah. for um what's your um uh, next oh but but actually it's a two part question i should mention oh, okay. what is your last purchase and what will be your next purchase okay i covered off the last purchase with mm -hmm. the yeah. the bluesy with the daytona um, yeah no 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 the bluesy the the submariner oh that's right well, after, yes. yeah, yeah correct <laughs> Okay. All right. And uh, before we go into that, I want to ask you, I have a no date sub ceramic. Um, you had the ceramic or the pre-ceramic? I had the ceramic, 114060, the, the 40, so same as 40 mil. Yeah. Which I still find this so weird. Like, you know, this is across the world and we, we share this same watch. It's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but nonetheless, um, the how do you feel about the new 41 millimeters, the new bluesies? Or your new uh, new one is forty one, or the the new one's forty one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would, so, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, I could have gone for the the newer one. I could have actually put my name down for one, but uh, I like the gold writing. I don't like the white detailing on it. It had to be the gold because it gives it that a bit more of a, a sparkle and a bit more of a special um feel to it, a special look because it's an amazing dial mm -hmm. and it's just uh, it just looks incredible with the gold. And I prefer the 40 millimeter, my no date sub. So it was kind of, I see that actually it was a 2018, my no date sub, no date sub, yeah. bluesy is 28. It kind of, so mm. it's kind of filling void in on different levels, but I, I don't like to buy the same thing twice. So, I'm not, and especially not in a week, um, <laughs> but um, uh, I, I had to get a sub, but it had to be different from the one. The date one, the black date one is very nice, but I just think the no date is for me would be, the non different enough. Yeah. yeah, 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 and the bluesy is just it's just stunning. It's just, I think the bluesy is just a beautiful watch. It's a, it's really really nice. It's um the, this the sunburst is it a lacquer dial? I don't know, but it's it's really sunburst, shining, yeah, yeah. super nice. It's it's really nice. I mean, I'm I'm a sucker for blue dials, and especially these for stuff. for me, it's a Smurf. The Smurf was their peak, mm -hmm. the pinnacle of of Rolex and Mariners, and I think you know you see that blue dial, you see it across the room. Yeah. Somebody's wearing it, and you're like, this guy, he knows what's up. Right, yeah, that's a cool, blue dial because cool yeah. it's Very not cool. the traditional blue, it's this bright, yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of you know, matte, almost kind of, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there was there was a video, I think Hodinki did many, many years ago, I think it was Hodinki, about uh, one of these military surplus uh, clothing suppliers. And the guy collected uh, vintage military submariners and he had them like all in a look in a, in a line, and the guy was wearing the solid gold blue sub mm -hmm. while he was presenting his vintage sub collection which i mean that that's just you can't you don't get cooler than that right. no no gosh yeah beautiful watches subs are just there's something i mean i love the daytona but i realize how much i love the sub mm -hmm. probably a bit more yeah. yeah i think the sub is, so, is, is, is is very common nowadays and un, un, unfortunately to to a certain extent but it's also 
so common because it's such so universally loved, right? Because people just yeah. love that design. Great and watch. it was what reading Submariner. One thing I just love just reading Submariner on the dial that, you know, because you're in the game, I think. When you're just, okay, it's such mm. a common watch, but it's, it's all personal, right? It's all what we like. Yeah, exactly. And, and reading that name on the dial was, for me was like, yeah, I mean, I'm back in the game. <laughs> I think this no, is, I, I this totally is the, agree. The, the one of the I, things, I get you. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. The one of the things that I'm, if I'm asked, hey, this is my collection. What do you think I should go for next? And it's like, do not ask me. Ask yourself, right? Yeah. If there is a watch that speaks to you, put it on your wrist and you think that's it, then go for it. Yeah. Uh, there is no that looking at a watch collection saying, ah, but yeah, you have two chronographs already, so you should go more in a different com 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 complication. Maybe you take a GMT, maybe a moon face. That's mm. all rubbish. Maybe you don't like moon phases. Maybe you don't want chronographs. But it, right, it's it's very personal. Mm. You know, there's people who yeah. only have yeah. submariners because they just collect various years or model versions of, of submariners. So why not? I mean, whatever. If it makes you happy, if you open your watch box and you think that's really making me happy, I love my watches. Then that's the only judge you need for oh, your, for your watch collection, yeah. right? Mm. So just going back to Martin's question, just to mm. the second part of it, the next piece. Yeah, it's uh, the one I'm, I'm looking. I mean, I shouldn't be looking at another one because I've just got one. But we, you know, come on, we're all afflicted, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the Santos, like yours, but the green one, the medium size. I think that's a really yeah. nice one in person. It's it's beautiful. Uh, I've tried the blue. I've tried the medium. Uh, essentially, I've tried both on, and I have a few issues. Kind of, um, I miss the blued uh, hour hands that's kind of one of the things that i didn't like about the 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 green and the blue and so i i don't know it's just not that quintessential cartier that uh, i bought this as my first and you know only cartier i want the you know prototypical what is a cartier um if you already have the white dial or the silver dial opaline whatever you want to call it then for a second watch, by all means, go get a colored dial. Um, I have a friend of mine that uh, just recently went absolute nuts uh, within Cartier and just started buying everything. And uh, he <laughs> bought two of the older ones with the Piaget movements. He bought the uh, old drive that was discontinued. Mm. The What was it called? The drive mm. slim or something. It was not slim. That's, mm. that's Hermes that has the slim. Um, I forgot what they called it, the thin, ultra thin. No, it was that's, that's uh, JLT. That's um, Piaget. Um, they have a stupid. I mean, it's the stupidest name for it. Okay. Um, the it's like the 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 Cartier skinny or something. I forgot what the name was. <laughs> but it, oh no, sorry, the ultra flat, ultra the very flat, flat or the ultra okay. flat. I'm like, yeah. what an idiotic <laughs> name. But what anyway, is it is it it is a stunning watch. Um, I think something like six millimeters thick. With the manual wine Piaget movement, oh. um, then he immediately yeah. bought the um, the the Santos Dumont, the one with the same movement in it again, and then he just got a second Santos Dumont, which is the black uh, lacquer dial, which is super hard to find. Um, the I think that's the large size um, Santos Dumont with also the same Piaget movement. So now he's got three of these. Um, not to mention he still has the one I have and he has, I mean, this guy really went nuts. So, um, yeah, yeah. Cardi, I think, you know, we talked about this in, in the, your podcast, uh, last time, um, you know, you asked what is kind of the up and coming and I think hundred percent it's Cardi. Well, they're already number yeah. two, right? And in, in numbers, uh, I mean. Yeah, but for not for men, that's right? True. Not for that's people. True. It mm. was, it was a very feminine brand and all of a sudden, all the all the men just kind of for some reason said, "Oh, Cartier," well, and they just I, woke up I, from this coma. I must admit as well, I wasn't into Cartier at all. But when I had the Cantos, Santos one hundred, I think it was at the time, I mm -hmm. saw that at an auction. I tried it on, and I thought, "Wow, that is really lovely." Yeah, right. It's That's a, a good watch. Yeah, yeah, it's a really great watch. But um, the gold yeah. one's nice as well. The Santos one hundred in gold. I've seen a guy wearing it on yeah. the underground, London Underground. Funnily enough, and it. <laughs> Stands so, there a mile, but mm. it looked good. No one said anything to him. But so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a nice watch. The man who searched But remember, they, they don't do wait lists. They don't do these games. And that's why I think people really got into it. Because we if you look at the brands, it. right? It's it's Rolex number one, Cartier is number two. So yeah, if you can't get number one, you go to number two. And uh, being that they're readily available in every boutique, I think that is... Yeah. 
one but, of the reasons. But, but you have to send your Cartier friend to the Dubai Watch Week, 17th November at 5 p.m. There is a session called Obsessive Collectors Dis uh, Co Obsessive Collecting <laughs> Disorder. Uh, yes. Yes. Barbara yes. Colombo. Send the Submariner guy as well. Yeah, send the Submariner <laughs> guy as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So what motivates these passionate individuals to amass or relinquish their treasures? And what uncharted realms are they both venturing into? So interesting uh, guests. I don't know who that the guests will be, but it's uh, moderated by Barbara Sounds Colombo. Like a, yeah. which she is, she's oh, lovely. Really? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, Very good. Yeah. So Andy, same question. I know we got off topic there for a second, but uh, yeah, gosh, back to yeah, you. Yeah, don't get me started. I I bit my tongue on on Cartier because I'm a huge lover of Cartier, so I'm not going to go there. Uh, otherwise, it's a whole other episode. Um, so the, my last purchase was the the Corum, so the the 15 gram gold bar watch. So it sounds vulgar, but check it out. It honestly isn't. It's a beautiful piece, uh, very similar to uh, Cartier, like American style on the wrist mm -hmm. and it just pops because it's 999.99 pure gold. So it just glows, you know, it's like mm -hmm. a mirror at times. Um, yeah, I love it. I love dress watches. That's something what just does it for me. My next watch is, it's a hot topic Submariner. I just need a Rolex in my collection. I did have a Tudor snowflake from the seventies Submariner, which oh, was okay. very, very cool with an incredibly patina dial. Again, the blue one dial? I yeah, I wish I still had it. But no I date? I don't know who has it. Uh, no, it has was the it date. A no date? So it, has a, it wasn't a so no this date. Is, it has a Cyclops. I was just talking it has a Cyclops yeah. as well. Yeah. It has a Cyclops, yeah. yeah, 100%. But kind of uh, like when you have the snowflake with a date, it almost like kills the vibe, right? Because the MN never no. used the ones with the dates. It doesn't kill the vibe. Yeah, that's date, true. Date, but... date are great. I love dates. Look, it was a great watch. Um, I loved it. But <laughs> if I can get 551 free, I am... Um, absolutely golden with that i'm really happy if not something around my birth year no date would be a great choice as well so that's that's next year i don't think it's gonna I, i've got the itch so I, I think you know january february time you might be seeing it so, and you do know watches go up with the, as it gets older in that realm not down yeah, if you have a birth year watch, then it's, <laughs> yeah. it's getting less getting and less old. available. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, Pam and me, we are on the older side, so that we know true. that. Yeah, it's true. It's getting yeah, harder. I can't even get one. I, I need to sell my house to get one. <laughs> yeah, so I think... I think well, it's relatively soon, it's right? January, watch, February, I mean, come on, it's around the corner. <laughs> yeah. But, but is, is, is a birth year watch actually that great? Because I had somebody telling me, what does it matter? if the watch is from the same year as you. And I was really struggling to figure that out because like, hmm, uh, I haven't had, uh, when I was born as a baby, so obviously you you don't really care for what's going on in the watch world. And you think, hmm, <laughs> why do I care <laughs> that this watch <laughs> was, you know, created the same no, time no, as me? No, the only way and, it matters hmm. is if, if somebody <laughs> bought it for you when you were born. With the intent of yeah, giving it fair. to you, but I was like I see, that too. I told I you when my daughter was you. born. Okay, I bought a Speedmaster, and that is her birth year watch. And at one point, she will get That's that watch, cool. and it will be her actual birth year watch, right? But so I think the logic think behind is, the birth year watch is: uh, it's been on the planet as long as you have. Right. It's almost, you know, yeah. th that's and on your and it's on yeah, your wrist as well. But, so it's as old but at as that you. Point, go so, for something older. Right, like his, like like Andy's hundred year old watch. Yeah, well, why would you want a fifty year old watch? <laughs> he might be hundred years, years old. Watch. You don't know. Do you? That might be his <laughs> birthday watch. He's great, a vampire. Great, great grandfather yeah, watch. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I I just think it's just a thing. Oh, I have to have one of these, and I have to have one yeah. of these, and I have to have a birthday watch. That, that that's okay, it's just an excuse yeah. to buy a no date sub. So okay. let me have it. Yeah, it's, see, it's yeah. probably got zero relevance. It's just an excuse. I thought about myself as well, thinking like, yeah, but I still like it somehow. I think still good. And then I thought maybe maybe I buy the Seamaster. No, sorry, the Speedmaster. That it was the anniversary of the nineteen seventy two last mission, whatever something seventeen was mm. it. The seventeenth mission, I don't know. Anyhow, so I thought maybe maybe I use this one, right? And uh, because then I asked this somehow the same like birthier stuff. Uh, now I gave away how old I am. Oh my god! Um, yeah, so that's um, that's. <laughs> but, I was quite tacti tactful there. I didn't give away my one. Yeah, <laughs> you are smarter than me. Because <laughs> I'm out. older, older and wiser. <laughs> 
Yeah, but anyhow, so that that that's my question. So I think we have filled a nice round hour of content, and I think we had a lot of really really nice discussions. So thank you so much, Chrono Passion Seven team, Andy and Palm, for being with us and for gracing us with your attendance. And I hope we can uh, do that again in a few weeks or. Oh yeah, months. let's do it again, definitely. And or, thank you so much yeah, during Dubai Watch Week. Having us on, right? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank yeah, you we so could much. do one live Bye. if you in, want. In person, you could. I mean, we we have we we could actually, if you want to to join us with some of the interviews that we have we are doing there. Why not? Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah that would be amazing. Come, come. Excellent. Yes, for those of it, we didn't mention this. Down, oh. we mentioned it in their podcast, but we didn't mention it in ours. Ah, uh, yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we did get a press pass for Dubai Watch Week, which means the Loom Plotters will be live. And recording interviews and uh, all kinds of content. We, 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 I don't think we will be live. Watch week. We will be there, very alive. Well, we'll record <laughs> it live and then we'll replay it for I you saw, later. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will be there and we will. I mean, give I'm not going to be there dead, there. right? Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, on that once again, thanks yeah. for joining us. Would you guys uh, like to? plug anything your your instagram handles etc yes. we usually let the guests do that so follow on spotify follow us on spotify chrono passion 7 the cp7 podcast our instagram is at chrono underscore passion underscore underscore seven the number seven please give that a go where we put our show notes as well so once you've done a podcast you can see all the pictures of um the watches that we've talked about but yes please give us uh, have a look and give us a follow if you can Thank you, guys. Exactly. Yeah, and they, they I think they recently started. You have, uh, what, four episodes live currently? Five. Uh, five. Five. Yeah, five. Yeah. Fifth one up. I, haven't, I haven't heard the... Well, but, uh, I didn't hear to the do tonight. one. I'll, I'll listen to it tomorrow, <laughs> yes. Uh, so that that is cool. But I've listened to the first four, and I think uh, you guys are definitely doing great. And uh, Thank you. keep up the good work. Thanks and so uh, hopefully we'll collaborate more again in the, in the future. Definitely. Thank Thanks. you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank All you very right. much. Bye-bye. Speak soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Awesome. I'm going to end the recording here.